There's a wave of craziness sweeping over the country that we need to talk about. Uh, It's called BSL. That's short for Breed Specific Legislation. And all states, except for the ACT, the Northern Territory and Tassie, have some form of it. It's where governments wrongly think that they can reduce dog bites by restricting the movements of certain breeds, again, that they think might be more dangerous than other breeds. Yeah, it's pretty crazy, really, Um, especially as experts here and overseas say that BSL doesn't work. Now, the AVA and the RSPCA both say BSL doesn't work, and in Britain, where they've actually had it for, can you believe it, 23 years, (laughs) their bite incidents have gone up (laughs) by 50%. Now, there's a lot of countries where dog bites have actually gone down, where they don't waste money on BSL. Instead, they're investing in things like educational programs. Now, Calgary in Canada is a great example. Dog bites there are actually down 80%. That's impressive. It is. But here in good old Australia, one state has not only ignored all the evidence on BSL, they've actually gone one step further. They're actively encouraging what can really only be called legalised murder of dogs that look like pit bulls. That state is Victoria, uh, where the latest victim, a little staffy cross puppy called Cursor, was exploring his new backyard and somehow got through a rotted paling fence into the neighbour's yard. Cursor's owner, Jade Appleby, had just moved in two days earlier and she hadn't yet registered the pooch. Yeah, look, in any other state, Jade probably would have been fined and mm-hmm. that would be the end of it. Yep. Uh, instead, Cursor got the death sentence mm. and Jade and many of her anti-BSL supporters battled in court but ultimately lost their Supreme Court bid to... To save Curse's life. Yeah. He was due to be put down at 5 p.m. last Tuesday, but lawyers managed to get a temporary reprieve right at the last minute, the 11th hour. In fact, while Jade was visiting Cursor, uh, after six months apart, she'd been given one hour to say goodbye. Mm. We didn't get Jade, but we did manage to track down one of her supporters, uh, the coordinator for the New South Wales portion of next month's global anti-BSL protests, Bobby Lee West, who joins us on the line. Hi, Bobby. Hi, how are you going? Good. How are you coping with all the, the drama? Well, I feel a lot better than I did yesterday. I was very emotional yesterday with, the, you know, the looming fate that was facing Cursus. I was very shocked and happily surprised when I saw on Facebook that he'd gotten a reprieve. Great. So how's Jade? From the photo that I saw yesterday of Jade visiting Cursor, just the massive smiles on their faces was amazing and Cursor hasn't forgotten her because the you mm-hmm. could just see the, the look of love between the both of them in yeah. the photo and um, but that's the one on your Facebook site is it yeah yeah it's gorgeous um, it's gorgeous it's, it's a beautiful picture yeah but they were expecting the worst and why is that and and how tough is that Victorian law I mean everyone was expecting to hear that Cursor was going to be euthanized simply because yeah. of the way he looks well he's They've been through the Supreme Court and they um, it got sent back to VCAT and when they did the hearing at VCAT, they denied for Jade to appeal again. They were basically saying that he'd met the standard too much for them to overlook it, so that was when he was given his death sentence. And since that day, Jade hasn't stopped. She's tried everything. She's contacted everyone and so has everybody else that's been following it. There's over 6,000 likers on the free Cursor page. I don't Mm -hmm. know if you guys have liked that page. Absolutely. (laughs) Yeah. um, So they've got, you know, thousands of people following Mm. the story and everybody's been emailing and and making phone calls and they, they even did a protest. Yesterday, while Jade was in visiting Cursor because they had allowed her to come and visit him for an hour before he was supposed to be put to sleep. And obviously, while she was in there, um, they've given her the news that they they wouldn't do it yesterday and they've given her, um, I think they said it's 14 days, but I'm unsure whether that's from a week ago when they handed out the death sentence or whether that will start from yesterday. And on what basis has she got a reprieve? I mean, if they're trying to say that this dog actually actually meets the standard for a, a restricted breed in Victoria and therefore has to die. How, how can she possibly fight against this now? Well, I guess maybe she can try different assessors if she can get more people to come and have a look at her dog because there are a few spots that they were questioning, but I think they have to get over a certain percentage rate within the assessment when they assess the dog for the standard. And um, he was right uh, right around the limit as far as I know. What breed does Jay believe she bought when she bought Cursor as a puppy? I'm not 100% sure on that. 
Mm-hmm. I have read it somewhere, but I, I, I can't remember. I can't remember what He's a large dog. Right He's a large, happy-looking dog with a very mm. large head. Mm. Yes. <laughs> He's a buff head. He's a buff head. <laughs> yeah, but it doesn't pay to be a buff head in Victoria. How many dogs now have been basically euthanized well, thanks to the these laws? Well, we know of, there's been quite a few, but I'm quite concerned that, you know, that they not, haven't told us about every single one that's been put to sleep. So the number is really hard to find out. Okay, well, we'll see what we can try and find. Absolutely. I, yeah. I, I'm just sitting here sort of gobsmacked and looking at uh, a couple of sites. I'm looking at your uh, site, Australian BSL Protesters on Facebook, and also yeah. the Free Cursor site. You know, and I'm thinking this is like wartime Nazi Germany, where they yeah. rounded up uh, the Jewish population and took them and killed them. And it's exactly yeah, what they're doing, definitely. just because they are a certain breed. You know, yeah, that's, that's wrong. Right. Or, or it looked like they might be a that's certain right. breed. That's right, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and... I've got a 10-year-old daughter and she said to me just the other day, you know, we're not supposed to judge people on the way that they look or what Mm -hmm. country they come from. We're supposed to accept everybody, aren't we? She said, why are they allowed to do this to dogs? So, um, you know, even kids, I mean, us adults can't wrap our heads around it, so I don't know how any child is supposed to understand. And Mm. so many family pets are being taken and I, I wonder how they explain this to their kids. I wonder too. Well, it, it explains a little bit, though, as to why you're involved with this rally that's coming up. In fact, it's it's bigger than just a rally here in Sydney, isn't it? Tell us about the anti-BSL rallies everywhere. Yeah, well, it's been organised worldwide, actually, to all come together on the 13th of July, which is a Saturday. We're starting at, at 11 o'clock, which most people are as well. Um, some people aren't doing rallies. Some people are doing dinners or special get-togethers, so in different ways, whether it be through their work or community groups and that type of thing. So there's different things happening worldwide. We're certainly going to do our best to let as many people as possible know about this and try and drum up some positive media uh, interest in it. It's all very easy to be uh, very negative uh, on both sides, in fact. Yeah. Uh, but we're going to try and educate the mainstream media because we are we have a media background, as you know. Kay certainly yeah. does as a, as a you know, well-respected journalist. And um, hopefully, you know, just try and change some opinions and at least get something done and see if we can, in fact, free curse. Yeah, that definitely needs to be done. Um, we'll get the word out there that the rally is on the 13th of July and it's not only just a rally, it's a march yes. through the streets and uh, lots of interesting people speaking, I believe. So um, yeah. I'll, we'll keep people posted as it gets closer. Thank you very much, Bobby. And let's see if we can come up with a better story to tell your 10-year-old daughter, OK? We <laughs> don't want those kind of laws here, that's for sure. No, that's all right. Thanks for joining us on Pet Talk Radio. OK, thanks for your time. So there you go. That's the, uh, that's the story of cursor and it's a pretty sad story really isn't it it's like it's heartbreaking i mean to have a dog that you know is fully healthy yeah. there is nothing um physically wrong with it there seems to be nothing mentally wrong with it yeah. and to actually be the owner that goes for that experience of having to have your dog uh, by the government uh, yeah. put down is i just i feel so 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 much for that um owner 